What's going on, everybody? This is John Jake Gaming on for Mine Cure, coming at you with a brand new episode of the FCS Dynasty here on NCAA Football 06, as we are now continuing the inaugural season here of this FCS season, year number one. And we got another eight games of exciting action for you guys out here today. Should be a great one. So make sure you go ahead, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button as well. If you do happen to be brand new to the channel as well, as we got eight games of action, we'll jump into game number one here. As we'll check out Morgan State, who is technically a independent school they're taking on columbia from the ivy league and columbia open things up here they get a 67 yard touchdown pass here very first drive of the game they take an early seven to nothing lead and now we'll get to see steve maxwell go to work who's been a gunslinger man he has a ton of touchdowns but he also has thrown quite a few interceptions so far this year he has seven interceptions now including the one that he just threw right there man and that almost ended up being a pick six as well but even though the touchdown was temporarily prevented daryl madison i was trying to go ahead and throw a beautiful bomb out in the back of the end zone but it was deflected away at the last second so now third and goal this will be a huge win if columbia is kept out the end zone but throwing right over the middle it's another touchdown for this tight end and the Columbia Lions, man, I didn't even know they was even like that. But they're playing off to a really good start here. They're up 14 to nothing here midway through the first quarter. And could very well be 21 to nothing here as a receiver was caught from behind. But going to his big body tight end here is Morgan State's defense. Which has, you know, it has had some struggles every once in a while. It has certainly struggled in this game early. Three touchdowns allowed already here in the first quarter. And we see the Lions taking a 21-0 lead here. And we still stay in the first quarter. Definitely some exciting action here. As this man is go could have almost been gone like a girl in a country song as Columbia continuing to throw all around the field they did have to settle for a field goal there but been a tough go for this morgan state defense as that is going to be yet another touchdown right there 30 to nothing lead here and we are not even at halftime yet it has been just really ugly for morgan state as of late as Steve Maxwell trying to get his guys back on track here, but facing third and long, but throws it right into the impact corner. As Columbia has dominated every single metric of this game, they've dominated the scoreboard. As y'all can clearly see, they have been winning the turnover battle. That was their second or third turnover. And of course, they have the time possession with Daryl Madison. Miss Columbia quarterback having a career day so far. He has three touchdown passes. Again, zero interceptions to this point. But his team will be stagnating in the red zone there. So he had to settle for a field goal. That's another interception. Oh, no. It's been that kind of day today. It's as turnover number three here in the first half in a 34-0 game. Madison under center. Looking for another touchdown. First and 10 from the 19. Madison actually going to run a reverse play here. As this man's going to get loose here. Is this a touchdown? No. It's fumbled as well. So Columbia finally turns the football over. And maybe this will help Morgan State not necessarily win the game. But maybe something to get themselves back into it as... Steve Maxwell actually does end up getting benched here. So this was Jacob Johnson, the backup quarterback for Morgan State, coming into the game now. And Jacob Johnson, first drive, throws a really impressive football downfield. It goes for a touchdown there. So 34-7 going into the second half. We'll see if Jacob Johnson can replicate that, although just facing some absolutely heavy pressure there. 
as that nearly was intercepted. Did throw that right into double coverage. Is now continuing into the second half. Johnson moving up in the pocket, gets it up into the air and throws a really nice football out there to, uh, to his receiver who was running that go route. Had to slow down a little bit. Dante Jackson did in order to come down and make the catch. But still a really good play to get them at about the 35. We'll see if Johnson can finish the drive though. And sure enough, he does. Morgan State with another touchdown. And Jacob Johnson here, touchdown number two in this game. Not saying that there's a quarterback controversy of any kind. I would never uh, mention or something like that as Johnson would also turn the football over here. Almost gave up the pick six, but Ryan Pittman does end up hurting himself a little bit after the interception. He was the guy that got the pick, but yeah, he's a little bit wounded here. We'll see if his team can finish the drive as the first uh, first team guys for Columbia are still in the game. So Daryl Madison with a chance for four touchdowns, but facing some insane pressure. And that will force the Lions to settle for a field goal. So 37 to 14 game here. Johnson with a chance to try to make things shake here as Johnson. Now he's doing good, man. He is doing good in relief. Not saying he should be the starter by any means, but what he's been able to do here in this second half, as well as in the second quarter as well, not bad. He's been doing a pretty, pretty solid for, for Morgan State. He's definitely proving that he is at least a somewhat reliable backup quarterback. Well, he's, I don't know if he's starter caliber, but Jacob Johnson's been doing okay as he does have a third and long, trying to make something happen, does actually connect with a receiver, but his receiver unfortunately did not go ahead and make the catch for him as this was just this has all been Columbia so far I've been impressed I didn't think Columbia was this good but hey maybe they uh they can do some things in the Ivy League and if they can do something in the Ivy League we'll see what that pertains in terms of postseason action you never know as Daryl Madison's gonna look in the end zone rifles it right in there that's touchdown number four for Madison as Columbia does go ahead, they win this game in a very convincing fashion. They beat Morgan State by 30 points. So that wraps up game number one here as we jump into game action here for game number two. And some Big 12 action here, you know, checking out. Really just taking the time to really take a look at how these custom coaches are doing so far. Uh, we see custom coaches so far in this episode. 0-1, but... We'll check in to see if Owen Benfield can do a little bit better as he's been coaching this Western Carolina squad, but not a good start to the year so far. They're 0-3 here going into this game. So that's uh, something very notable to keep an eye on. That being said, though, they are jumping into Big 12 Conference play. They're taking on the Golden Lions. Now, that is quite... A name right there, man. The Golden Lions. You don't hear that name very often. And Arkansas Pine Bluff, man. They get off to a great stop. They snuff out the trick play. They force a turnover. And they get plus uh, field position to start out. Maybe an opportunity here to go ahead. And maybe force, uh, you know, an early 7-0 lead. We'll see how this Catamounts defense does end up responding. As we'll go ahead and see... The tailback for Arkansas Pine Bluff get into open field. He is almost shoved out of bounds, but that's Brian Young with a 36-yard run. He just does an amazing job there of following his blocks. It sets him up into the red zone where the Golden Lions, they are going to cash in, but in a pretty unique way as this running back actually goes ahead and fumbles it into the end zone. But thankfully, one of the linemen do end up recovering it so needless to say that's how really western carolina's luck has been you know just bad plays like that you know that just aren't going their way but this one goes their way info as greg perkins was open down the sideline had a one-on-one -on -one situation and took advantage of it 55 yard reception sets him up in the red zone 
But on fourth down here, they only need one yard, so they actually go for it here on fourth down, and it works out for them in a massive way. And on a fourth and one, Western Carolina does end up finding the end zone. And it does go ahead and get knotted back up at seven apiece. As things are still tied at 7-7 seven to seven here. But with a pun return there, this could break the tie. And it does. We got a huge touchdown there as well. Maybe this is where we see the Canamats really show out here. A team maybe a little bit more talented than the Owen Free record that they showed. As Owen Benfield's guys are really starting to buy in to the new system that he brought to the Catamounts, man. And I'm starting to really show dividends here in Big 12 Conference play. It's now a 21-7 game here, but the Golden Lions are going to fight back. They got some dog left in them, of course, as they are chilling at the 48-yard line here, trying to run it up the middle, but it's stuffed by the Catamounts. And it was a promising drive here for Arkansas Pine Bluff. But that being said, you know, that gets end up getting stalled out. And here we go. Western Carolina trying to get some points off the turnover. And they'll have no problem with it as he finds Perkins in the end zone. Another touchdown. And guys, we are not even one. We're not even halfway through the first half yet. And it's already... Starting to get a little bit out of hand here. We are seeing a huge lead here being built by the Catamounts and this defense, which was one of the lesser defenses. They came in 94th in the country in terms of yards allowed per game. They have really stepped it up in this game, really giving their team across the board a chance here. How does this man get out of that? Wow, that's crazy. I had no idea that he was going to be able to get out of that. I thought that was going to be, you know, tackled. You know, still a good play, but I thought he was going to be tackled here. And now it just seems like, for the most part, everything going right for the Catamounts here as they now open it up in a huge way. It is now 35-7 as Jarrell Patterson's been feeling himself despite the huge deficit trying to throw it over the middle, but he's going to throw an interception it's his third interception of the season and the rich gets richer and the poor just keep getting poorer it seems like as that turnover now gives the catamounts yet another extra possession here as they take over and around the 24 yard line gonna yeet this thing deep and patterson all by himself and somebody better go call his mama because mama there goes that man right there as it makes it 42 to 7 here in the second quarter you know this would be a really impressive win if the score remained this way right now but we're still in the second quarter as we got a fumble and it's another turnover for spot catamounts as the golden lions now have three turnovers here in the first half and most of all the catamounts start in the red zone and they are going to cash in oh just a career day for this offense we're now talking about 49 points for western carolina here and could still get a little bit bigger now as it's still 49 to 7 Dropping back, Brandon McGee is going to dump it off to his tight end, but his tight end gets some blocks, and that's also going to be a touchdown. So needless to say, Western Carolina, they do manage to notch their first career win, winning 63-14. to So now things really start to heat up in conference play, as you can see, and we got two teams that are not necessarily ranked as of right now, but that being said, they're both in the top 30. They're both receiving votes for the AP Top 25. And whoever wins this game is going to put themselves, you know, a little bit closer in that driver's seat for the Big Ten Championship, or at least in this new look Big Ten, as we'll see both teams take the field. Both teams, three and one. Both teams also 
sitting in the top three. So, could be a really exciting game. Should be a very competitive game as well. We'll see who ends up coming out on top as we dive right into game number three of this episode. As this running back gets loose and he's going to be... No, not gone like a girl in a country song. As Dante Jackson gets caught from behind, but great blocking by the offensive line to create some serious holes. Dude just didn't have the speed to completely finish the run, but they will get inside the five. And Dante Jackson will find the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee Martin. And the Skyhawks going to be soaring here early. They'll take a 7-0 lead. Because now, Southeast Missouri State looking for a response. Trying to get Glenn Williams involved in the offense. But Xavier Callahan gets his very first interception here of the season. And... The Skyhawks, they already starting off inside the 30. And Dante Jackson going to create some huge opportunities for himself. Seven rushes so far. He's averaging nearly 15 yards a carry. That is absolutely wild here. We'll see if they go to Dante Jackson again. He's been really feeling himself in the opening moments of this game. Is now Dante. We'll see. First and 10 from the four. Dante Jackson does get the carry. And just like that, Dante Jackson finds the end zone. Touchdown, Skyhawks. And just a dominating day by on the ground so far. Skyhawks already over 100 yards of rushing here. And the Red Hawks definitely need a response here. Going to try to get their running back involved. Scott Parrish as Parrish is able to leave the rest of the defense in the dust in a much needed score that gets southeastern missouri state right back into this game that touchdown gets it back to just a one score affair but you know what's about to go down on kickoff something's about to go down here as S tennessee martin well let's just say it doesn't take long for him to get on the board we see them return with it looks like a 98-yard touchdown return on the kickoff. So just like that, Southeast Missouri State back in square one. Got to rely on Scott Parrish. And Scott Parrish making a pay for it. He's loose with it. And he's going to be gone. Parrish end zone. Touchdowns. Red Hawks. And Scott Parrish doing a great job following the blocks and also avoiding a couple of defenders that elusiveness that he has is certainly elite so back to a one score game here but they're just having a oh hang on it's not gonna be a touchdown it might be a touchdown the other way though as the fumble is recovered and no one on the offense is going to catch this man and wow brett olsen with the ncaa record at least within this game for the longest fumble return in a single game 97 yards it ended up being and at least for the time being it does tie this game up but skyhawks they're getting downfield they're looking to get some more points on this possession it's been quite the track meet here could be a potential game of the year potentially as dante jackson does help his team finish the drive another touchdown for tennessee martin and now 28 to 21 here as we get into the closing moments here of this second quarter as scott Paris he gets the carry but he gets lit up like a christmas tree this time he's been really getting loose to, uh on that you know offensive side of the ball but at least he was contained that time around but they go to the passing game this time. Glenn Williams able to find his receiver out the flat. And it's an easy score there. So now all knotted up at 28 as Scott Parrish. I'm surprised this man hasn't come down with any sort of injuries as of yet. But getting into the final quarter here, still all tied. 31 apiece. Gwen Williams, he's feeling himself. Fakes, no, he doesn't fake the handoff. It's Scott Parrish. Oh my, what a spin move. What a spin move. Oh my goodness. Touchdown, Red Hawks. 
and 38 to 31. That could very well be the finisher right there, and that does end up being the difference. Southeast Missouri State in what was an exciting game. They will beat the Skyhawks on the road. They went down to Tennessee, and they win this one 38 to 31, which does mean the Red Hawks not only will improve to four and one here in this inaugural season, but sets them up in pretty good positioning to get ranked into that AP Top 25. We'll have to wait and see when the poll drops later this episode. So we'll have to wait and see if we see another game like that where, you know, the, exci the excitement was really there across the board. It was an exciting game for sure. As we'll check out one of the top 25 games that are happening around the country. We have number two, Eastern Michigan, who is definitely embroiled deep in that championship hunt. They are taking on number 22, Kent State. Now the Golden Flashes, they, I don't believe, have their quarterback. They don't have their starting quarterback. So here they are on the road, already considered underdogs as is. We'll see if they can pull the upset or will the Eagles of Eastern Michigan just roll over these guys like a Sherman tank in the fields of France as Eastern Michigan does have an early 10-0 lead. The backup quarterback looking to move to his right a little bit as Williams going to launch this thing and sure enough finds his receiver and it's going to be a touchdown for the Golden Flashes as Kent State pulls within a field goal here and a chance maybe to take the lead. Going to throw it over the middle, but it's fumbled. And Eastern Michigan is going to recover. Wow, what an absolutely devastating hit that we just witnessed. As the lumber was seriously laid out there, that's for sure. But a couple of field goals kept it pretty close between these two teams. But jumping into the second half here, we start to see maybe a little bit of a dif difference in composure here. Eastern Michigan may be starting to pull away here a little bit. 24-7 to at this point. As we will see the punt return uh, not being a fair catch. And just probably one of the easier touchdowns that we might see here in season number one. As there, it didn't seem like there was really any coverage to speak of. So now 31 to 7 here. Williams drops back, trying to make something happen, but he throws an interception in the red zone. And Tyler Williams hurts his elbow. He actually, actually, he is the starting quarterback, uh, not the backup. His backup, though, is in the game because Tyler Williams not only is gone for the rest of this game specifically, but he's going to be gone for a really long time. So uh, Ken State's going to have to find a way to try to manufacture offense without one of their better offensive players as golden flashes they did end up going for two and they actually succeeded in getting a two-point conversion in order to go ahead and make this a two-score game but it was just one of those things where the offense of kent state got going and found that groove a little too little too late kind of thing and eastern michigan they prove why they're a top five team as they win very convincingly here in MAC conference play. They will win by a final score of 41 to 16. So Eastern Michigan does end up remaining undefeated. They still have a goose egg by their uh, by the number of losses that they've had this year, while Kent State still having a respectable year and staying in the hunt for the playoffs. But Kent State gonna fall to three and two man uh so they'll still need to put a little bit more work in order to experience that postseason action so the actual game of the week i i wasn't sure if it was this one or uh the last game that we just watched here we got north texas taking on the troy trojans and both these teams ranked inside the top 15 north texas specifically Coming in as the number one team in college football in this FCS universe. They come in undefeated. They are 4-0 as of right now. 
and they are led by their quarterback, Brad Neely, who's been pretty good so far. 915 yards, eight touchdowns, two interceptions. The big question, though, is who does Lee Corso end up going with? And sure enough, he does end up choosing to rock with the mean green of North Texas. But we might see that Lee Corso effect taking shape here early as Troy is going to get a huge touchdown downfield early. And just like that, we get a 76-yard bomb as the mean green, they ended up sending a blitz. So those defensive backs, they were on an island. And unfortunately, that island was simply not secure enough. So Troy will end up going ahead and securing first blood here. But we jump into the kickoff on one of the next possessions and Troy ends up recovering. So the non-number one ranked team in the nation, the Troy Trojans, they're off to a hot start, man. They get going here early. They don't manage to score a touchdown here. They had to settle for a field goal. But really, uh, so far, Troy playing uh, pretty considerably well here. They're up 10 at the half. But, you know, even though they have the lead, they are having some difficulties in terms of putting this number one team in college football away. And one thing that I've learned, you know, between college football and also Game of Thrones if you go after the king, you best not miss. And they let Troy hang around, but Troy's going to get an interception here. And that should, that should be the end of the game. 45 seconds left. North Texas still has their timeouts granted, but they can get one first down. This game will be, would have been over, but they go free and out. So they give North Texas one last chance here. 10 seconds left. In the ball game, they got two plays. Neely launches it, and it's in. He catches it. He catches it, despite the triple coverage. And North Texas is going to escape here as Neely just throws a beautiful bomb downfield. The receiver just runs past everybody. What are we doing? What are we actually doing, you guys? And North Texas... They are going to escape. They even get the Gatorade bath going here, man. And the mean green here are going to remain undefeated. You want to talk about a heartbreaking loss? That is certainly a heartbreaking way to lose. As Troy, they legitimately, they had the lead for the vast majority of this game. As a matter of fact, they led the entire time except for the final 10 seconds. But it doesn't matter who leads the longest as long as you're leading when the final buzzer sings. And sure enough, North Texas keeps being undefeated, whereas the Troy Trojans, they will end up falling to 3-2 and two on the year. But let's go ahead and keep things south of the Dixie line as we check in on another custom coach. We got South Dakota State here who comes in two and two they they're a weird team man the games that we we simulate with them they end up winning but then every time they get in gameplay like actual gameplay they don't do as well so I'm, I'm curious to see you know whether that still stands or not they are taking on a north carolina ant squad who is going to be representing a bigger conference or in the new look big 12 but they still haven't won a single game yet so it's going to be really interesting to see Really, how this game ends up turning out as if you're, let me just say this. If, I think it's going to be one of those games where if you love defense, you're going to love this portion of the episode, right? As, you know, we're through the first quarter. We still haven't seen anyone score yet, but we might have a little bit something here. It's got a beautiful throw right over the middle. It's going to catch that for a really good chunk of yard. It gets across the 40 yard line. So again, great field position so far as we're going to see this man get into open space here. Hang on. Is it going to be? Ooh. Okay. Ends up being a really good run. Tim Martin off of the speed option to the right-hand side. Able to get some good space. And South Dakota State, man, they're able to settle for a field goal. So that's how they end up striking first here. And 
But Jack Rabbit's defense really coming out to play, right? Like, they have really shut things down here thus far. It's still 3 to nothing here. And we're midway through the third quarter as neither team's offense can find any sense of rhythm here. But here's a big run, though, down the right-hand side. It's Kobe Bryant, Kobe with a C, who ends up following his blockers and gets a good chunk of yards, gets them at least close into field position. As now the Aggies do find themselves in the red zone here, but a long third down. And while this quarterback trying to scramble out of the pocket, I mean, that pocket just collapses on him. So North Carolina, they also end up settling for the field goal, but still, <coughs> it is still a really close game. It's still all knotted up. It was all knotted up at free. Um, South Dakota State does eventually get another field goal of their own. So they really have a chance here. South Dakota State for the first time in this series win something in gameplay. And I'm sure that's something that head coach Justin Faith would really love to see. You know, his guys showing up here on TV. But the Aggies, man, they have might have something to say about it here. As the Aggies are driving downfield, they get into field goal range. But I don't know if they want to settle for a field goal. They might want to go ahead and get themselves a touchdown. As we see a throw over the middle, but it's going to be intercepted. So this very well might be the dagger right there. Under three minutes left to play here. We see a huge interception. Looks like from... Ben Sampson, they do run out some time, but they don't take all of the time off the clock here. As we see multiple broken tackles here, this might go for a touchdown here. It doesn't, but another huge gain. And Scott Martinez determined to lead his team to a game-winning drive. As we get into the last few seconds here, second and goal from the one. They're going to try to run it in the end zone, and sure enough, they're going to get it. Kobe Bryant following the space created by the interior of that offensive line. And a heartbreaker for the Jackrabbits as North Carolina a &T, they end up notching their very first win of the season. And one of the most defensive games that we've watched here uh, over the course of this series so far they win by a score of 10 to 6 so definitely not not a that exciting of a game if you're more of an offensive guy but it was certainly a close game it was certainly an exciting game didn't see um you know it wasn't sloppy by any means i mean we only see one turnover between the two teams so we get into game number seven here and we have another Top 25 matchup, Central Michigan, who comes in ranked number 12 in the country. They take on the Akron Zips up in the Rubber Bowl, who comes in ranked number 18 in the country here. Two teams, you know, ranked you know, with relatively the same stature, right? That's what we got going on right now. Somebody to watch out for, though, Robert Kennedy. Dude is 260 pounds. He's got some solid speed for a guy that weighs 260 so definitely someone to watch out for in this game as we'll go ahead and get things underway here as did presley just go ahead and moss him i'm pretty sure he just did look at this there wasn't even a very good thrown ball that should have probably be intercepted if i'm going to be honest here with you guys but presley finds the way to make it happen and helps his team get to an early lead, not to mention running game. Running game is completely on point as well. As we will see the Akron running back, you know, juking around in the end zone. That's something that's, you know, really cool about NCAA 06. We see the CPU, you know, really deploy, you know, those spin moves, juke moves, you know, those, that kind of nature. In NCAA 14, even on Heisman, you don't really get the C van. So that's a really, uh, really nice thing about NCAA 06. But, yo, know, let me, uh, let me get off my reminiscing about this, uh, old, older college game right here. As Travis Hill is going to drop back the pass. He had a completion for a second, but 
his guy forgot about the football and he drops it on the ground Akron's able to return it pretty well too uh you can't even blame that on Travis Hill uh I don't think I don't think it's an interception um at least I don't think so I'm pretty sure that was a fun more of a fumble recovery um but Akron is going to be able to go ahead and attack on a field goal from that is we're seeing quite a bit of turnovers between these two teams here now as Central Michigan is able to get a turnover inside the red zone so maybe this will finally get them some points on the board but we're really uh under thrown ball there and uh defensive back was able to pick it off there as well so no points off of that but Central Michigan will eventually get themselves on board here they will eventually find the end zone for a touchdown and it's someone who is a uh in the process of being a Heisman finalist Bryson Haston number one there for Central Michigan who came out of the backfield and got that touchdown but Akron is going to respond right away after the Chippewas end up getting their first score of the day as Jones even rolling to his right as well still able to deliver a pretty accurate football overall and it's gonna create a really big lead for Akron and we're now looking at looks like 30 30 to 7 and with that uh interception might end up becoming uh 37 to 7 we'll see what Jones and this offense can do here as on first and 10 trying to throw over the middle but that's intercepted as well maybe this gives the Chippewas a little bit more hope here as we got the second interception of the season for that safety so we'll see if I'll get the Chippewas back on track as Travis Hill trying to throw one out on the perimeter as this was that kind of day man five turnovers overall for Central Michigan you literally cannot make this up right now it's been it's been a rough day I mean two turnovers three turnovers okay it's not good but it happens but five turnovers though you just can't win uh regardless of whether it's you know the highest levels of FBS division one college football or even down here in this FCS dynasty universe it's just so much harder to win games when you're turning over to football that often and that's that legitimately was the difference as Akron Akron's gonna go ahead they're gonna win this thing pretty convincingly I think you know unless there's a miracle that does end up happening really nice spin move there by the way oh my goodness that was you want to talk about looking like going to a laundry mat you know just watch that running back take some carries you know what I'm saying but Central Michigan they're going to receive the kickoff here you know they definitely need a spark here they're going to get it here though as it looks like dude kicked it from the goal line so a 100 yard touchdown here not going to celebrate or anything like that because even with the two-point conversion you know you still end up losing by multiple possessions ends up being costly at the end of the day as Central Michigan will go ahead and fall here on the road at one point they were ranked borderline in the top five but now that they suffer yet another loss their second loss of the year we'll see how low this ends up dropping them as Akron will improve the three and one we'll see how high they get the opportunity to climb meanwhile Central Michigan their record will fall down to three and two on the year but before we go ahead and jump into the final game of this episode, let's take a look around the NCAA to check out some scores around the league just to see, you know, what happens to be going down as we jump into our first game that we're looking at. San Diego State, man, they are on a mission to make it to the national championship. They take on Northern Iowa, and Northern Iowa was simply outmatched, losing 47-3 to in this one. The Aztecs now 5-0, whereas Northern Iowa now sitting at 2-2 two two after this devastating loss. Meanwhile, Mid-Tennessee State, they will bounce back as well. They took on Wofford, who's still looking for their first win. And Wofford is struggling, man. Wofford losing big, 45 to nothing in this one. New Mexico State also taking care of business. They win 24-6 against the winless Utah, Southern Utah squad. 
Meanwhile, FIU got to play host to the Seminoles of Florida State over in the ACC. And FIU is going to come up short. They lose to the Seminoles 39-22. to It's their first loss of the season, so we'll see what ends up happening to them. Florida Atlantic, though, will remain in the top 25, however. They shut out Cornell, the big red, 44 to nothing. Cornell dropping to 1-3. As for New Hampshire, New Hampshire continues their amazing season that they're experiencing right now. They went on the road in conference play to take on the Howard Bison and winning pretty convincingly, winning 30-3 in that one. Howard still looking for their first win this season, but... New Hampshire is still undefeated. Ball State, meanwhile, just entered the top 25, and it looks like they will remain there for now as they beat Bethune Cookman on the road, winning by a score of 35 to 7. The Wildcats falling to 1 and 4, while Ball State improves to 3 and 1. UO Monroe, however, does end up getting upset in simulation as they took on Arkansas State in Sunbelt play. They lose 34 to 31. UO Monroe. Falling to 3-2, while the Indians of Arkansas State, they improved to 3-2. So we'll see if they switch places in the top 25. UNLV, meanwhile, still on a tear as well as they went on the road to play up against the University of Missouri in Kansas City. And it was never close from the get-go. UNLV winning by a score of 57 to nothing. The Kangaroos, who just started their football program, still looking for their first win in their debut season. ECU, meanwhile, hosted the Towson Tigers, and ECU taking care of business with relative ease, winning 40-13 and remaining undefeated while the Tigers fall to 2-3. Temple also going to be undefeated for the time being as well as they improved to 5-0, beating a winless Illinois State squad 38-10 on the road. UCF, however, does experience an upset in the later games as they took on the Raging Cajuns, but losing 37-34, to UCF will see how far they drop as this is their first loss of the year. New Mexico State continuing to prove, however, that they deserve to be in the top 25. They went on the road to play against Idaho State as Idaho State loses 37-3. to North Dakota State now 4-0, while Idaho State now falls to 2-3. Rice also had a little bit of an upset bid uh, they were experiencing. They played William & Mary as that defense pretty darn good for William & Mary. However, just couldn't get enough points on the board as the Tribe now with two losses in a row, losing to the number six ranked team Rice Owls by a score of 20-13, to losing it in the fourth quarter. SMU, meanwhile, winning on the road to play against Northeastern. As Northeastern still searching for their first win, losing 36 to 10, SMU improving the 5 and 0, and will remain as a top five team. Idaho, meanwhile, played host to Utah State, and Idaho losing big here, losing 38 to 14. Utah State now two and two. Idaho likely falling out of the top 25. However, Tulane they played host to Ole Miss and. They nearly beat the SEC school, but they do end up losing by a field goal as the Rebels were able to score 17 unanswered points to, in order to go ahead and make sure that they win that game. Buffalo, however, also losing. They lose to Western Michigan 27-17. This is Buffalo's first loss of the year as well. So the last game that I wanted to go ahead and cover in this episode is you will do a little check-in on another custom coach, Coach Montana of the James Madison Dukes, who do jump into the top 25 for the very first time. They're checking in at number 24 in the country with that 2-1 record. But they take on a team that's on, really, to be honest with you guys, on the opposite end of that spectrum. Uh, they're taking on Princeton, who is still searching for that first win of the season, and... Really, the Princeton Tigers, they have, they're, they're ranked in the bottom five uh, in terms of national rank. They're ranked, I believe, 117 going into this game. And right from the get-go can really see that difference in talent as Jamal Williams is going to come out here. 31-yard run, a little bit of a, you know, reverse play, speed option. And it sets him up in the red zone where James Madison 
has really been successful at during the course of this season. You want to talk about a team that has always scored. They have a 100% success rate. As how about that score? That man dragged a foot as well. What a beautiful catch in the back of the end zone. And that's how that first score happens, man. Wow, what an amazing throw there. That was not an easy throw and catch to make. But a 7-0 lead early for the Dukes. That's going to quickly grow into something that might end up being much larger here. Now 14 to nothing here as Princeton is trying to get their offense going as well. They start on the 15-yard line. As now the Tiger quarterback dropping back, looking over the middle, threw it up in the air as he was facing heavy pressure and Lucas Riley first interception of the season and it also happens to be that first defensive touchdown of the year so far 21 to nothing and Kenny Raymer man he is feeling himself ain't he third second touchdown pass of the day that puts him really 13 touchdowns still no interceptions this season he has not thrown a single pick that's really what's been impressive about him specifically he has done really a fantastic job of taking care of that football and something really admirable about him to be honest as that's going to be yet another touchdown montano really making his presence felt really trying to drive home a point here that hey man we may not be as highly known, but I'm going to tell you what. We're coming for that natty. We are coming for that national championship. We are coming with a serious vengeance. We are a threat. And this is how you send a message. 42 to nothing here. And not even through with the first half yet. This could very well make it 49, except my man forgot about the football. Princeton actually has something positive happen they force a turnover something that they really to be honest with you guys they desperately needed as kevin parquat that definitely sounds like someone that would play uh college football for an ivy league school uh he has not been sharp today that's their impact player at quarterback and he has really thoroughly been shut down and not only has he turned the ball over twice now his interceptions have directly led to scores. Now two defensive touchdowns for James Madison. It makes it 49 to nothing, and it's gotten so bad that we are not even out of the first half yet, and they already have the backups in the game. Princeton's uh, cheerleaders, they're celebrating, but like, yo, it's the backups, and it's an easy win for James Madison, winning 63 to 7. So we are now closing in on about the halfway point of the season as we check out the Sports Illustrated cover real quick. Rice on the cover after their very narrow escape of uh, their matchup against William and Mary. And we do have surprisingly not a new number one. I thought North Texas could have been unseated, but that did not happen. North Texas will rename number one, followed by Eastern Michigan, who garners 21 of 61 first place votes after their 41 to 15 victory over Kent State. You know, as of right now, you know, the top 10 actually is pretty much what do we do same. The only thing different is New Mexico State. They swing in to that top 10 position as we do have some other movements. Ohio moves up five spots despite not even playing over over the course of last week new hampshire now number 13 in the country thanks to their 30 to 3 win over howard so they are rising up the polls relatively quickly we got uh ucf they only actually fall two spots as louisiana lafayette uh they took a three point loss to them james madison who we saw in this episode they're number 16 in the country central michigan they did fall to five spots Ball State moves up seven spots after a four touchdown win over Buffoon Cookman. Buffalo falls five after a 10 point loss to Western Michigan. But some newcomers into the top 25. Looks like we have five newcomers McNeese State at number 20, Arkansas State at number 21, San Jose State now in number 23, Murray State at 24, and then rounding out the top 25, we have Southeast Missouri State 
who now comes in ranked number 25 in the nation so we're starting to see some actual fcs teams getting into the to uh, top 25 which is really good to see as alabama state i don't know how but they are receiving top 25 votes along with montana southeastern idaho and tennessee martin which tennessee martin was a team that southeast missouri state did recently go up against so you love to see it now as for the heisman watch as of right now brian brown he's a senior running back he is now first place in the heisman voting he had a really good game against kent state almost 200 yards rushing uh, as well as 84 yards receiving he was very instrumental in their victory against kent state also in this group nick moses he still remains in the top five as long as a surprise here ikeda woods freshman redshirt from georgia southern he has been absolutely big for them didn't help his team win last time out but he did have two total touchdowns uh 200 yards passing 150 yards rushing he's been really good this season for the eagles and then we of course have will patterson who we've seen earlier he's fantastic and then Kerry williams who you know is in the top five as well after a 24 to 6 win against southern utah and then finally rounding out the you know post uh, week six action we have the players of the week for the offensive side of football the fcs player of the week goes to brandon mcgee the junior quarterback from western carolina huge win against the university of arkansas pine bluff he was awesome in that game 350 yards seven touchdowns thrown in that game and only had one incompletion as well so a no-brainer that he wins the offensive player of the week and then over on the defensive side of the football eastern illinois uh in the new look big 10 the junior middle linebacker in daniel martin winning that defensive player of the week his team went on the road to play against jackson state and they win by a score of 38 to 28 his guys you know he ended up with 16 tackles five of which were tfls two sacks as well two forced fumbles to go with it and then a fumble recovery so a a man that was really flying all over the field in this one he was instrumental in their week six victory so that, guys that is going to wrap things up here for week number six and i hope you guys really did enjoy it next episode we got some very intriguing matchups including our very first top 25 matchup between two former fcs schools in southeast missouri state and murray state that's gonna be one definitely to watch out for hope you guys are excited for it and if you are make sure you go ahead smash that like button hit that subscribe button as well if you do happen to be brand new as next time out we will have week seven action but with that this is john shake gaming on the mic signing off i'm hoping you're all out there having a good one take care everybody